Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to talk about the problems associated to welding aluminum. And i got to tell you, in all the materials that are out there, we probably get more questions on aluminum than any other material. And, and mostly is how to weld it. Now, you know, we've done videos on welding aluminum before, but we're able to compile the top five questions or the top five problems uh, that most welders have with welding aluminum and uh, you might be surprised what they are. So uh, I'm going to start off with the, the very first one is what size tungsten do I use to weld aluminum? Well unfortunately what happens a lot of times is if you're set up using 1 16th tungsten you're welding steel you can weld up to about 120 amps before the tungsten starts breaking down. That's on DC minus and that's welding steel. You hit the button to turn it over to AC and you're getting ready to weld aluminum and all of a sudden this tungsten just explodes or at least it wears out or starts balling up and splitting. And the reason for that is aluminum is not an efficient arc. You've got an AC arc. So it, the challenge on the tungsten is much, much more by far. So as I reach that 120 amp mark, you're going to see this thing break down. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gear on and demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about and see if that matches what's happening with you. Okay, it's, uh, it's going to start challenging the tungsten. I can see it now. And I just am now getting to a point where I can see a puddle. And it's not terribly bad for a 116 tungsten. And, and it is welding, it's just that I, I, I've lost the tip off my tungsten. So I'm going to go ahead and taper off. And you know, I, I started off with a pointed tungsten, and you can do that with inverter machines. But at, at 1 16th tungsten, I, I just lost the tip of it, and uh, chances are there's a little bit of it in the, in the weld itself. So the fix for this, it's a quick fix, just jump up one size, go from 1 16th to 332. So that's what we're going to do. I'll, I'll put the 332 in there, and you can see that much more stable. Okay, I've, uh, I've exchanged the tungsten. I'm, I'm up to a 332, getting a lot of cleaning action. And I'll reach building point here pretty soon. Pretty thick material. And you just gotta wait for it. Not sure enough, there's a puddle starting to form. Anyway, it's wetting out very nicely, and you can see that the point's still on the tungsten. You know, it's not challenging at all. So, overall, that's probably the right setting. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and terminate the weld. Back off very, very slow, because it has a tendency to crater crack if you don't. Okay, so 332 is the right selection. It, you take a look at the tungsten. It, it may have balled back a little bit, but not very much. So it, it sustained the point. It also allowed the arc to stay very, very tight. Uh, so in aluminum welding, it's always really hard to get a small weld. So grinding it to a point using an inverter style machine is an advantage. So uh, I'm gonna move on to the next uh, mistake that's made by most people. And a lot of it has to do with a thing called hot short cracking. And hot short cracking is in aluminum. And you know, you can weld steel and stainless steel and other materials, and you can fuse it, and you can even fuse the tacks. In aluminum welding, 
it's sensitive. And that hot short cracking, what all that is is you've got aluminum that's transferring the heat so fast that what happens is you have a liquid puddle and as soon as it cools off and transforms back into a solid, it'll try to crack right down the center of your weld. So the one thing I, I caution you on is hot short cracking can be prevented just by adding filler material. Now there's a secret to that also. When you start your puddle, make sure you dab just a little bit of filler before you have any travel speed whatsoever. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna simulate that right now. Okay, I'm just gonna wait till I see a puddle. And it's actually a little more difficult to fuse. Seems to be running nice and clean. Good cleaning action. Well, that was me. I fell asleep at the wheel. Okay, I'm getting to the end of this, uh, this part, so heat builds up pretty quick. Anyway, you can see that, that it welds nice, it welds clean, it's easy, it's flat. And we're gonna give it, uh, we're gonna give it a few minutes because here's, here's a concern. If you don't add filler, then what's going to happen is the weld is very thin and it'll have a subterranean crack and if you move it at all, the entire part will crack. So let's give it a few minutes to cool off and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, now we, we've let this part cool off and, and really to show what sh hot short cracking will do to you. And I say to you because there's, there's no advantage to hot short cracking. I don't know if you can get the, the cameras to zoom in far enough, but right down the center of the weld, it's starting to crack. And it's almost all the way across. Uh, the only thing holding it's probably, uh, uh, you know, less than a few pounds per square inch pressure. And I'll show you how, how weak this weld is with a crack all the way down, all the way down the center. So it just doesn't have any strength to it. Uh, it, it it's easy to do, it's easy to make it look good. And not adding fillers easier to do, so just be very cautious. Make sure you add filler. Now the uh, the third thing I want to do is I want to go to the balance control on the machine. And not every machine has a balance control. Some of them have auto balance. Uh, this particular machine does have a balance control. And all you're doing, you may see a little feature on your machine that says cleaning or penetration. Well, you know we've asked engineers to design these machines to create all kinds of cleaning. Uh, unfortunately, what happens if, if you turn your machine over to too much cleaning, you don't get good penetration. Uh, what's the balance? What, what makes it look the best? What's the strongest? So we're going to cover that right now. And I can tell you, on most machines, I'd like for you to set your machine somewhere at 70% negative. Not balance, 70% negative. So I'm going to do a well on 70% negative and show you how to evaluate whether you're getting too much cleaning or not enough. So let's do that, and then I'm going to do one totally out of adjustment just to show you that may be what you're, you're experiencing with your machine. So let me get my gear and get all set up, and uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that to you.
Okay, what was interesting about this is I had the machine on on a balance that I liked on most machines, and that's around 70% negative. Now, you may adjust and go to 72 or 73. Every machine is just a little bit different, but make sure you go a little more to the negative side. Now, I've got a 332 diameter tungsten, and it had a point on it. So the first weld that I did it was only two or three inches. It just welded fine, and, and you could look at the, uh, the, the cleaning action. You don't need any more cleaning than beyond this little heat affected zone. If you're adding more cleaning and it's bombarding your plate, it's wasted energy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to trash your tungsten. So I did the three inches and then I had it set on 50% balance. Uh, you know, and theoretically that's uh, the optimum setting. Well, it isn't. So just know a balanced wave is not the way to go. What happens is you start losing stability. If you start losing stability because you've got all this cleaning action going on, uh, you don't have any welding action going on. So it's actually a dirtier weld. The cleaning action is hitting a broader region and you just don't have a pretty weld. So just by changing just a, one setting, I could show you how you can go from good results to not so good results. So uh, just know each machine is a little bit different, but again, 70, 71, 72% negative, that's the secret. Now, when I went to the, uh, uh, the balance, it challenged my tungsten so much that it's starting to ball up again. And uh, that's just not the way you want to go. So now one of the next questions is, uh, take a look at your machine and, you know, how many, how many amps do you have in your machine? Because it's going to determine how thick a material you can go. I mean, do you want to weld half inch thick uh, aluminum? Do you think you can do it with a 200 amp machine? And, and the answer is no, you can't. Uh, you can do some specialty things, you can do preheating. Uh, but overall, you're going to have to go to a water-cooled machine. Now, I've got a chunk of aluminum here, and I'm just going to attempt. I'm just going to attempt to do a bead on plate. Now, I've got the great setting on the machine right now. I've got it at 70% uh, negative. So let me turn the machine on and, and show you what you can get with a, a chunk of aluminum. Okay, the reality is this machine will not handle this block. So you need to set your expectations on the machine that you have. If I wanted to weld this, in fact, I couldn't even get it to puddle up. I'm using 200 amps and it tries to clean the surface. And probably if I held it here long enough, maybe five or 10 minutes, the, the block would heat up. So if you ever get into that bind, go ahead and figure out a way to heat this up because you're not gonna get it heated up with the amperage on your machine. So 200 amp, not enough for this. You know, uh, a 200 amp machine, uh, about the max you're gonna be dealing with is about a quarter of an inch. So don't expect anything more than that without some, some support or help somehow. Uh, now the other thing to keep in mind is that if you go to a higher amp machine, you know, I recommend that you get up to minimum 275 or even a 300 amp machine. I don't care whether it's a transformer machine, inverter machine, but you're gonna to have to go water cooled because you can't stay on 200 amps for the time that I've been on this. So this torch works great. It, if you got one part, you can get on it and off it. It'll, it'll handle 200 amps, not a problem at all. But otherwise, you're gonna to have to go water cooled. Okay, this is another helpful hint. This happens quite frequently when welding aluminum, specifically aluminum, because it's, uh, it's so sensitive to tungsten contamination. Uh, are you having this kind of a problem? You're lighting the arc and you're getting little globulars and you get black and soot and all that and your, your puddle just not uh, flowing out very nicely or clean and just compared to, to, to this setup. Just one little change can help that. And in many cases, you don't even know it's happening because in aluminum, what happens is you'll be welding along and you're dabbing your filler and you'll get tungsten contamination. And it doesn't happen like when you're welding on steel. It happens so smooth, so quickly, you don't even know it happened. But a glob, a small glob of filler will get sucked up into your tungsten 
and then it starts thrusting oxides down on your part. And that's all that is. It doesn't get any better. When you, when you have that happen to you, and I'm going to show you how, to, how it happens and what it looks like, you've got to get rid of that, that contamination, and you can't grind it off. Typically, you have to break it off. So let's show you what that's all about. Okay, so I got uh, the machine is set up just right. You can see that the puddle is clear, clean, waiting for me to dab at the base of the puddle. And I can do that continually, dab, 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 dab. Now, here's what's going to happen is I'm going to add filler material and I'm going to get it. Okay, the, you know, the fact is, once the tungsten contaminates, the weld's going to be unstable. It's just going to have the uglies. So make sure that you actually take the tungsten out completely. And, and if you look real close, you see these crystals? That's actually aluminum. Aluminum has sucked up to the tungsten. I need to break off that tungsten because you can't grind it off very well. It camouflages too well. So I've got to break off about a fourth of an inch of my tungsten. And when I say break it off, it needs to be snapped off very quickly. Tungsten will have a, a tendency to splinter if you're too slow with the breaking process. So watch what I do. I, I find a sharp edge, like this, like this vise here. And you can use any sharp edge. You can, you can use any, any material. Okay, so I've broke, broken off the bad part of all this. Now, I'll just I'll regrind, I'll put a point on it, and then I'll reestablish an arc, and I'll show you how well it cleans up. Okay, you can tell it's, it's going to be a clean puddle. Got rid of all the contamination. Now let's just start adding filler, and you can see this coming out clean. And I'm just dabbing, dab, 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 dab. And I'm getting into my well termination right here, so I'm going to back off on amperage. Maybe I just a little at the end there. Okay. Okay, so you can see that the, the contamination was at this part of my weld. Uh, reground, broke off, reground my tungsten, and resumed my weld. And absolutely perfect cleaning action going on. So uh, that's, that's just the, the, the secret. You've got to know that you've got contamination if it starts showing orange or, or any of these ugly colors that I showed you. So uh, anyway, that's it for aluminum welding. And I uh, certainly like your suggestions. Keep calling in, keep writing, and we'll continue to do this for you. So thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.